Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I have another 2D tutorial and it's going to be on post processing and how to implement it for 2D games. So as you know, 2D games can look really, really good with the right visuals and Unity do have a very easy way to do this with zero scripts because 2D games can look good without but they add massive, massive effect when visuals look really, really good. So as you can see, I've got a little scene set up. This is from, these are the assets that I use in for my game currently. I developed these in Photoshop. Um, it's just a little background, some walls, uh, some corner tiles and so on. And it looks okay, but it looks a little bit bland. There's no game juice to it, there, no game feel. Um, we're gonna be adding that today. So the first thing you've got to do is go to the window, package manager, and you're gonna get this little screen come up here. If you've got, and uh, we have post processing here and if it doesn't show up go ahead advanced and tick show previous packages and it will 100% come up for you guys then we have all of these but the one we're focusing on is post processing so yeah like I said if it doesn't show up go ahead to advanced tick on this then there should be an install button up here and go ahead and click it wait for everything to load it will do it all for you and then it will say up to date your version and then remove so then we can go ahead and close this window so now if we go to our project you can see I've already got one, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for you. I'm gonna go ahead and press create post processing profile. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it the same thing. And now we have, you can see in the inspector, no override set on this volume, and we have a bunch of effects. These effects we're gonna be going in depth shortly, but if we was to choose them now, nothing would happen. So the first thing we've got to do now is go to our camera, scroll down, add component, and go post process layer so we've got three the one we want is layer and now you can see we've got a few options so what you need to do with these options with trigger go to camera and uh, drag your camera in this little trigger next layer scroll down and go to post processing if you don't have this layer it you just need to make one and call it post processing and um so if it doesn't make it it doesn't matter if they make it or you make it it just needs to be there right and the rest we can leave for now the next thing we're going to do is create an empty game object we are going to go ahead and call it post volume because that is the next thing that we're adding. So now if you just type in post process, then we've got volume. Go ahead and attach that. Because we want this for every, all. if we was making a game, we'd want the same for the whole scene. We don't want one thing doing this, one thing doing that. We want everything to have the all effects. Go ahead and press is global. And now you can see that anything that we was to do, it will make uh, global now finally if we go ahead and select our project select our new part well don't actually select it drag it into your profile of the post process volume and now it says no override set on this volume go ahead and set this layer to post processing make sure you've done the same for the camera and now we can go ahead and select our new post processing profile that's a tongue twister Go ahead to our add effects, and now we can start changing stuff about. So the first one I'm gonna show you guys is auto exposure. So if we go ahead and select that, click on this little uh, tab window, press all, and now we've got all of these options to choose from. So we're gonna to go to minimum, and I'm gonna change this, and you can instantly see it changes the lighting of the game, which is pretty nice. Straight off the bat, you can see there's a massive, massive, crazy change right there. You probably wouldn't have it you're not going to have any of these set to an extreme unless that's the, the aim of that's like the style of the game. Okay, next, we're going to go to Bloom. So Bloom is the famous one. Everybody loves Bloom. I love Bloom. You love Bloom. <laughs> uh, and we're going to go to <laughs> Intensity and uh, just raise this a little bit. And you can already see it adds a bit of a glow to our assets. So if you used to have a very dark asset and a very light one there, it would add glow to both and it would blend that light. And it would look really nice. And you can see if we was to raise this, it looks crazy strong. Um, I think a nice intensity is about there. And then if we lower the intense, uh, the threshold, the tiniest bit, maybe that intensity is too high. Change this to 0 0.98. And you can see instantly, we do have a really, really nice glowing effect. Maybe there's too much for you guys. For me, that looks absolutely perfect. But if I was to go ahead to our hierarchy, select post volume and disable it, you can instantly see the change that we have between the two. We're going to go back to our project, select this. And the next effect that we are going to go to is color grading. So I, I love this effect. All it, all it simply does is just change the colors and um, it just alters the colors. But I'm going to show you how to do it. So you're probably going to get this little error. All you've got to do is select all, 
change the mode from high def to low def. And now you can see that error is gone and we can start changing stuff. So temperature, if we lower it, you're gonna see it's go very icy cold, very, very strong. It's a bit of a strain to the eyes. And we're gonna do the polar opposite and it gives that glowing like lava effect. I love this effect, but I wouldn't tend to use it because we've, we're gonna be uh, accessing a lot more range of colors down here. So if we go ahead to hue shift, this is where you're gonna get a crazy amount of variation with colors. So now you can see it pretty much is like changes the color of everything. I'm going to give you guys a seizure if I'd spam that anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, we can pretty much use any of these. I'm just going to go ahead to this nice. I'm going to raise, uh, lower the, uh, increase the saturation. Gives it a bit more definition. Maybe increase the brightness a tiny bit. Actually, I'm going to change that. Set. Mm, I don't know. Maybe just like that. That's cool. I'm cool with that. And then we can... I'm going to lower the brightness slightly, very, very slightly. And yeah, so this is what we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our hierarchy, go to post volume. And now if we turn this off momentarily, you can see the crazy, crazy change that we've got already, guys. And this is like, we're, we're not even getting started. And we've barely added that much. Like if we were to raise, uh, lower the threshold, just like that. And now you can see it's a really strong glow just from the tiniest change. So if we go to hierarchy and disable this, now you can see like such an effect it has on your game. And we haven't even got to like my favorite ones yet. Like that's probably too much of a glow. It adds a bit too much blurriness, which I'm not a fan of. So we can easily just go and either lower the intensity or raise the threshold. Maybe if we increase the intensity slightly. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, the next one, I'm using this uh, with every single level in my game is the Vignette. I love this. It looks really, really good. And I think the best way for it to look is to make sure it's subtle, but it's very definitely noticeable. So if we change the color from black to around a dark gray, and then we can go and raise the intensity. And you can see it already adds. So if we just go all the way, it makes it like too defined. You can see the circle. I don't like that. I like having it around here. Maybe just like that. Maybe if we make it a little bit darker. Just like that. Now if we go ahead and select full screen, you can see we've got a much cooler effect in the corners. It's a little bit darker on all sides. This is again highly customizable. You can change it so it's literally like that so it looks like an eyeball. Or you can make it like that. You can change the roundness of it so it's like a full circle. I'm just going to keep it to how it was to around 0 0.3. Uh, and you can change it so it's a full circle, like a literal circle. So they're the four we've got. Again, I'm going to go and show the difference that it is with or without. It is pretty crazy the effect it's giving us, guys. Um, next, what have we got? So what is the other one I wanted to show you guys before we get a move on? Uh, depth of field. Oh, no. Chromatic aberration, sorry. And depth of field are the last two I want to show. Chromatic aberration is so sick. I love this feature, and it looks so good. I'm currently using it with my game. If we raise the intensity of it by around 0 0.3, you can see in the corners of your screen, it uh, it slightly drags it out and it gives it an absolutely epic effect. I love this effect and I'm using it for my game at the moment, like I said. And as you can see, we've got like these corners that stick out now and it looks really, really cool. It's such a cool effect. Um, if we were to really raise the intensity, you can see it makes it really strong and uh, really quite blurry. Which could be a really cool effect to go for. But I wouldn't have the intensity personally set all the way. Unless it was for like a boss fight. I think for a boss fight that could be a pretty cool idea. But we're just going to go ahead and lower this again. And finally the one I want to choose is depth of... One I want to choose. The one I want to choose is... Actually no this isn't the final one. Um, I'm going to lower this. Because that's that was like really high when we first went on. Um, is it going to work or is it not going to work? Oh there we go. There we go. That is crazy blurry. Like, you would never have your game like that, obviously. Maybe, like, I don't know, the tiniest bit? I'm not sure. But, yeah, personally, I wouldn't use it for my game. If you're using it for certain scenes or levels, by all means, go for it. But the final one I do want to show, this is definitely the final one, is the lens distortion. This one is this one was making me laugh because I set the intensity all the way up and it was I was playing, like, my level with it. And it was proper making me laugh. So if we raise the intensity... You can see it alters the, um, the 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 distortion, obviously lens distortion of your camera. Like if it's all the way low, it is that is crazy. Like imagine playing a level like that, you wouldn't even be able to see. And if it's all the way out, it's it creates like this really weird 
like I don't know. It's really cool. I think it is so cool. Like it is really fun to play with. But yeah, so that is the last one. Maybe if we was to have it like the tiniest bit. So it's just only just sticking out. I think that looks like a really really cool scene now, guys. So if we go ahead to the hierarchy and just disable that, that is the difference we've got. That is just a, an absolutely crazy difference. Makes it look thirty times better. And that is all I've got for you guys today. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I can answer them. This is a very easy way of improving visuals with zero script. So I'll thank you very much for watching. If you did find this helpful, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. And I'll thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.